Okay. Our family, can we get your All right, attention? So, uh, welcome again. Uh, you know, you've been around Ghana. They always say Akwaba, but uh, you know, we're from the Fra Fra people, so we say Leazari. Or you'll see on the front and say Leazari, which that's just like uh, Akwaba. You know, that's welcome in a Fra Fra language. You know, they got forty something languages in Ghana, so you know everybody's got got their welcome. Um, I'm Jerry. Uh, because of Bomani, some people have seen me on YouTube. Yay! You know, I don't even have a YouTube. Well, I do. I think I have one YouTube channel with one thing on it. You know, but most people. I was in Los Angeles somewhere. Well, I'm from Los Angeles. A guy walked up to me. He was Jerry, Jerry, and I'm looking at him. He's getting closer. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm supposed to know this brother. Maybe from you know, Hello. my mind's going. And, and uh, he got up close and he says, ah. then he said, you don't know me. I'm like, okay. He says, but I saw you on Bumani's video. I said, what? I'm in L.A. I said, okay, so they watching, you know, they're watching all of these things. And, and I'm real happy to see that um, the enthusiasm for Africa is really, is really coming back. Oh, it's I, rising, remember? And I think that, um, you know, they say truth crushed the earth, rise again. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I think they crushed our truth for a while. Okay. But they can't keep us down because, you know, we the first people. That's right. We started this game. So the rest of these people on the earth at some point are going to have to look back and, and remember who is who. And our people, first and foremost in the diaspora, uh, and it's not just because Trump and all of this, because this was going before they started clowning. You know what I mean? Well, they've been clowning, but I mean clowning Trump style. Uh, even, even, when, even when Obama was president, you could still see, you know, people started thinking there's got to be another way. And then I think we have to also give credit. I'm sorry if I'm talking back. No, no, I, I think we also have to give credit to a lot of our scholars and a lot of us who were doing them study groups back in the 80s and 90s when nobody was listening. Oh man, that was a foundation, brother. You know, and nobody, we, we thought nobody, you know, we read shit on to Jeff and everybody just walking by us. But slowly, Asa Hillier and all of them, this stuff start creeping in. And creeping Dr. In Clark and Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, Amos Dr. Wilson, ben, all that good all stuff. All of it started creeping in, you know, and I think it's starting to bear fruit, really. <laughs> and people are knowledgeable, they're interested, they're not... They're not caught up on all of the hype, and I mean, I've just been so encouraged over the last, especially the last six or seven years, you know. I even had some friends who swore they'd never come to Africa, come last year, you know, and uh, in a group group of people that, that I know. And they loved it, of course, and, you know, but a lot of this has to do with social media. People are seeing Africa like it is, and then these kind of things, like Bomani and Cole, these folks, you know, they're letting people see a whole different side. And at the same time, we're also looking and um, knowing that the West, quote unquote, it's not even delivering for their people. I'm looking at this COVID thing. It's not all black folks dying. Of course, disproportionately it's gonna be. But they, they don't really seem to care what happens to their own people. So that whole thing is getting very shaky. And I think people are waking up saying, we better start looking at alternatives. And as a minimum, at least, get in contact just in case we need to do something. So uh, I'm, I'm just, I mean, COVID this year, we haven't seen too many people, obviously, but uh, it's coming back strong. So I'm, and the people, the quality of the people, the knowledge of people who are coming is really, I mean, it's really unbelievable. So uh, I, I hate to say, I'm gonna get in trouble for saying this, but uh, who, who, no, this is just, who knows Marimba Ani? Some people do. Some people Most do. people don't. Who was that? What was that who wrote the book Urugu. She's really been giving us some real strong support and encouragement, and, and she's around, so you all may meet her today. Oh, cool. Marimba's here. She's here. Always so, good uh, to see her. Yeah. And um, what else? Okay. So just quick about this place. I came in from Los Angeles. I came in um, originally in '93 just to visit. Um, and I was visiting all of West Africa. And in 2002, I came out here with my father, and there was nothing out here. So, like, you like know, nothing. We, we saw the beach, and it's like, you know, I think I might try to get something here. But 2003, I, you know, drew up our little contract. And so I've been here since the end of 2003, going back to LA and Atlanta for 
a lot a lot part of that time you know just spending time back there but um it's been good you know there's a whole lot of little traps uh, that you get caught in as far as uh, financial and land and this and that but it's one of those kind of things that you know if you don't overexpose yourself you might lose a little bit you know I think the problem is people and they put everything on one thing without really knowing what's going on then they lose everything or, you know a big chunk of their money and then they have to retreat back to the US or the UK or whatever it is I think the secret is, you know, lose, lose quick. <laughs> In other words, you know, <laughs> fail quick, as they say. And you go know, back. get 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 <laughs> something that you think you can lose, you know, deal with it, and that way you'll be learning the ropes, learning the people, learning the, the how it goes, and then if you're unlucky and that goes, and you, you know, you learned a lot, and the next time you'll be smarter and you'll be more confident, and you may be able to bring a little more and commit a little more. Because it reminds me of, I saw a guy at Harvard Business School, he was one of the professors, and he told his, he told his students when they got there, and this day, in these days, to go to business school is $100,000, probably more than that now. And he told them, he said, told all of the students their first day, he said, be honest, if I was advising your parents, I would have told them to give you the $100,000 and just go blow it. You're going to learn a whole lot more I, than I'm going to teach you. Trust me, you will. <laughs> yeah, you know. Experience you'll is learn a better all teacher. Because you kind of things, but I'm not advising you to blow that kind of money, but I'm just saying. This, these kind of things uh, to keep in mind for people who are serious about coming here. Um, just as far as the being here, you know, I mean, it's hard to ask for more. You know, black man in a black country. And uh, even when the, if the police stop you, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, your, your, your pulse don't even change because, you know, it's going to be a friendly discussion, you know. They might give you a little stern look, but that's just to see if they can get a dollar and fifty instead of a dollar, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and even then, if you give a guy a few bucks to because something's wrong with your vehicle or it's not, you know, he, he, getting ready, he getting ready to take it home to some black, a black wife and some black children. Exactly. You know, so we talk about recycling black dollars. Every time you reach in your pocket, you recycling black dollars here. Not every time. I mean, we start going into the higher end imported stuff, and we're working on all of that. You know, all y'all know some of those problems. But the point is, you know, you're just in the mix. And so, your brother get me for an extra few, and that just means his child is going to get, you know, some his uniform a little quicker. It's not a big thing, you know. So Thank when you, you for that. Yeah, and so. Thank you. Yeah, because people are always feeling, oh, they're trying to cheat us, they're trying to burn us. I'm saying, wait a minute, you know, I mean, it's, it's family. Now, they ain't going to make you feel like family right away. But, <laughs> but if you have that kind of higher consciousness and know what we're trying to do as a group, you won't get dragged down in every little offense and every little song. This guy did this. You won't be like that. You'll just be like, okay, let me. Don't get me wrong now. You, when you get hurt, you're hurt. I mean, we're all like that, but not the same way and if you're here trying to build towards something then all of those small things just kind of fall by the wayside so I always encourage people what the sister told me when I first got here she said look up and not down and what she meant was that if you look up and think about the enormity of the opportunity and the beauty of being with your own people and the possibilities of rebuilding something the power and sovereignty of black people around the world looking up, you'll feel that lift. If you look down at every gutter and every, you know, small, small, and the guy got your extra two dollars and you spend your time down into the weeds, you know, what happens to you when you walk around like this? Nothing good comes. So look up, don't get bogged down on the small things. Protect yourself. I don't mean be super defensive, but, you know, fail quick. With the little bit that you think you can let go, don't try to let it go. Fight for it all because the more you fight, the more you learn. And then you lost a few thousand or whatever it is. Now when you guys are ready to bring your millions, you know what to do. Who, who's bringing the millions? <laughs> are you? Okay. Maybe some tens. Say we're looking for thousandaires, not millionaires. Right? Thousandaires. <laughs> um, Okay, and so quickly, oh, first of all, any questions at this point before I talk a little about the wall? Yes, ma'am. I do have a 
question. So, so you talk about the um, the, the quick failures. Yeah. Um, do you end up? Have you ended up going back and working with some of those same people? Do you still have relationship with people who are kind of well, like? That's a very interesting question. Very interesting question. Here's why: um, a Ghanaian can burn another Ghanaian today and be so angry and all of that, and then next week they're back together. <laughs> and you say, "Well, how did you forgive my man after he, you know?" Well, uh, you know, I mean. Yeah. We can work it out. We can work it out. So very so you see people fall out with each other. We kinda like that too in the US, right? You know. So you know, I thought that? you left that dude. Well, you know. He's cute. You know, he's <laughs> so, straightening up. So, you know. so you had those experiences where maybe you had clash or conflict. Oh and yeah, and then um to resolve it and still have the guy some you'll see some guy out here who's been bleeding. I I said I'd never let him back over here. You know? <laughs> he's here. He's here today, you know, and, and we cool. Hey, I can go fire him for you. Yeah. I like firing people. You can fire him, but he'll be back, you know. <laughs> he'll be back. <laughs> and another thing, to be honest, and this is not a good thing, but sometimes you go to mechanic A, and he kind of halfway messes you, you know, doesn't do it like he's supposed to. You say, forget this guy. You go to mechanic B, he does it worse. He says, forget them two guys. You go to mechanic C, he really kill you. Next thing you're back in mechanic A, so you know, like, it looked like it wasn't that bad, actually, you know. You got to work it out. You're, 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 you're surveying your options. There you go. But, but you're a little smarter this time around, you know what I mean? And you know how to. So just try to minimize your big exposure and then just get hit small and you still learn the same lessons and then you'll be good to go. You know, you won't make big mistakes after that. So, um. But all of it is worth it, you know? Yes. I mean, every time I go to the U.S., you know, I get out of the plane, and I see black folks at JFK or wherever it is, and I think to myself, what are y'all doing here? <laughs> you know, and then it all comes back, oh yeah, that's right, slavery. And this but my first impression is like, why, why are y'all here? Doing what? Trying to make these people happy, trying to accommodate them, trying to make yourself likable, arguing about whether or not you were actually qualified or you weren't. Yeah, we, yeah, you know how it is. We're trying to go along to get along. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let it go. Yeah. Feel your own. That's what Garvey told us. That's why he's on the front of the wall. There you know? go. That's it. What man is done, man can do. So, you know, you build your confidence. You build the confidence of our children, which is what this is all about. And uh, quickly, if you saw one of the Bomani's, I think, first video, I said that I used to go in the schools a lot, you know, to the, all of these local schools, trying to teach a little African history because they don't have any. I mean, none. And, um, even, or very little. Not even, you mean African American or African? No, African history in general. They'll have a little local political history, but then it depends on who's kind of in power, which way it leans politically. So it's not very useful in terms of real history. And um, so I didn't like that. And rather than just complain about how they got all the European and Greek historians, I was going to the schools trying to do it. But there's so many, you know, Bamani would say there's a million villages just right there, you know. By the time you get through running your car down and run, you know, just on and on. You burn yourself so out. So I got the idea after a few years, if, since I had the space, if I did the ancestral wall, I could just bring the students on field trips. And that's much better because the teachers and principals are already motivated to bring the children, so they're going to make sure, you know, they pay an attention. Whereas you go into school, you know, people are like, who? Who told you to come here today? <laughs> well, I talked to the principal, okay. Whereas they got to put them in a little transportation and get them here. They're like, look, y'all better pay attention because we had to put fuel in here. Yeah, and, and, and the children love it, of course. You know, they're just like, wow. So that's what we've been doing. And by now, I don't know how many hundreds or maybe thousands, I don't know, of children we've had come through here. And uh, some of the things we do, uh, along with you know, just walking them through the wall, depending on how much time they have. Sometimes they come back two or three times. We may bring them up here, and I'll show on the screen different things. Maybe we'll talk about the human migration patterns around the world, so they understand that they are the first people in the world, although we talk about it along the way. Sometimes I'll show them things having to do, say, with the Congo, when they were cutting the arms off of the people who weren't retrieving enough rubber. Sometimes I'll show them something of lynchings in the U.S. You know, I had the Beyond Sanctuary, or, you know the book on lynching, uh, 
but all without, of those without pictures without, huh? without sanctuary and I used to have those so they could pass them around look I mean they just need to know what's happening and who they're dealing with and ask themselves why they're in love with the people who they've been trained to be in love with unfortunately the little ones haven't drank the Kool-Aid yet they're like they did that and you know that makes an impression now when you tell the 25 year old and 35 year old or even 15 year old they did that, then they say, you know, well, what did the blacks do? I mean, by that time, they, they're already thinking the other people have good intentions, and if something went wrong, it's our fault. So we have to get them so early because the propaganda is so heavy. So we're fighting against it, but, um, you know, we're on the right side, so we're going to win, you know? Yeah, documentation and all the things you're doing. <laughs> yeah, we're on the right side, so we're going to win. Uh, someone else with a question? Well, first of all, I want to say I'm excited to be here. I'm even more excited by the fact that you guys are from Arkansas ties. I'm from Arkansas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I wanted to ask you another question. How far is Erna there out here, too? She Erna will be here. She, she'll be here I, this morning. She just lives right over here. Okay. So she'll be here probably around noon. Okay. I told her because I think we're going to walk around some before the food comes out. Okay. And then uh, and she'll be here. How many... Uh, African-Americans live in this area? Uh, you know, I really don't know because I'm, I, I meet people in... Ghana? No. I mean in Prom Prom in, in particular. In Prom Prom. Yeah. You know, I mean... It's one of the strongholds. I would... It's, there's a lot more, I think, down toward Cape Coast, but, okay. really, you know, they're showing up. I mean, there's probably 30 or 40. It's good number. Something like that, I would think, you know, when you count. A lot of the people aren't here full time, but they built. Like your brother was here just a little while ago. I never met him. Turns out he built some big place right up here. This is actually we're in New Ningo, but it's the whole they call it kind of Ningo Prom Prom. So the brother is just building over here. Then his sister came here a little while ago. I'd seen her once. I just thought she was visiting. Come to find out, she's just finishing her house up here. So people are coming. Sometimes I'm meeting them and they're talking about it. The next thing I know, you know, they've got something on the ground. Um, so it's, it's getting to be a nice little community. And the other thing, you know, we have a lot of people coming from the UK, you know, who have some similar experiences in the diaspora with Tony Blair or jo Boris Johnson, you know, whatever they're doing there. And they like, they're coming here. We got people coming back from Ghana who are Ghanaians that are selling out here. So we're getting a good mix of people who have exposure to outside and I'm not saying that's necessarily a good thing it can be a bad thing if depending on how much Kool-Aid they ingested but sometimes they ingest it just enough to vomit it back up and then they're useful because now they can come back and say here's what's really going on so we're getting a, a nice community yesterday Saturday you know we had lots of different people coming out here talking about things so soon I'll tell you later but what we're going to start our um, sessions in my middle part there. I haven't had much cash this year, so I haven't been spending any money, but I'm sure next year will be a little better. So we'll have our students coming on Saturday morning. We started it, but we had to stop. And then we'll have, um, we'll, we'll look at it when we get down well, there. Well, it seemed like you added another floor, huh? So Well, we did add, maybe since you were here, I might have added another floor, then I ran out of cash. I'm just like I'm telling you, bro, I remember being here in 2008, none of this existed. Oh, well, Mane and I a with few brothers a few came and I mean, it was that place and all that was, was Bush. Yeah, it was only your house right there in 2008. I would never forget. Yeah, and it was, I didn't have anything. Because you know. I remember just walking back here and like... Out here, you yeah, felt just, like you were going to get attacked by lions or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was just... Oh, I'm Bush. telling you, family, um, when we have a dream, we just put our energy together and build little by little. And that's one of the things... Um, you know, even when it's in Tanzania, they have this word, pole, pole, slow, slow. Slow, slow. Or in, we say in uh, Ghana, uh, kwa, 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 little, kwa. little. Yeah, the houses say, kadan, kadan. <laughs> the gods say, few, few. My <laughs> wife, the Grunies, they say, uh, fin, fin. So, so everybody just, has their small, small. Yeah, yeah, we just build and keep on building. That's it. Yeah. We'll, we'll get there. Uh, so. And you're, you're an inspiration because we got... 65 acres of land. I'm like, there's nothing on there. I was like, so oh, I'm yes. drawing motivation from you. It's gotta, you gotta start with nothing on it. <laughs> Something on it, you got a problem. You, know? you got to fight. All right. So, uh, what else? Uh, maybe, maybe we could take a little water break and then get ready for.
You know, I try to get here early when like the sun is not, but it's yeah, never, it never works. That, that sun be kicking. <laughs> this is Africa after all, you know, this business about being hot, it's not just a rumor. You know. Actually, it's true, but it's a good thing about it. So what we, what we do a lot of times is uh, everybody's fired up till we get to write about uh, George Washington Carver or maybe the Fannie Lou Hamer. They like break time, so we come back up here and chill for a little while. Depending on, I think we're talking about eating at 12. So um, probably like, closer to one o'clock we work. You know, it was, you know, you know how it is. Those things never well, work at time. I know it's uh, yeah, it's uh, eleven, like oh, eleven yeah, or five, eleven or six. Yeah. So even if we can do two or three session, like, oh, we we'll so work we it out. We can come, and you know, y'all get your exercise by climbing back upstairs, <laughs> and we'll cool down and have something cool, and then either go back down or eat, just depending on how the things work. Unless you can do like two thirty-five minute segment. I can do anything you want. I mean, I can. Last time we did that, been, that one hour segment and, and half of the people almost hours, collapsed. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I that, that luster's not to, we, need to, the, we want the pulley pulley side. Pulley pulley. Not, yeah, not, the, not the three hour. That no, no, I mean, it's, yeah, 35, 35 is fine, you know. Uh, I had some two year olds up in here last, they my favorites, you know. They're all two. And I'm saying, you know, and it was hot that day, you know. I mean, they didn't come to like right in the middle of the day, no. And uh, the teachers were like, oh, Lord, and we got down here and it was like, they said to the children, we're going to go inside, we're going to go up. And these two-year-olds now. And they started going, no, no. <laughs> because they didn't know what I was saying, first of all. They had no idea what I was saying. All they knew was some big pictures and they was good with it. Boy. <laughs> So I started saying, even getting that in the subconscious, yeah, you know, where they're saying, yeah. somebody thinks black folks are important, because they ain't never seen nothing like this. And they yeah, all black people in the they world. They were two, two years old. I said, wow, this is, so we can't start too early, you know. But y'all ain't two, and so we'll uh, go as far as you want to go. Uh, anything else before we go? All right, oh, anybody have any questions before we oh. cool down and start the presentation? Uh, let me say one or two other things before so we don't necessarily have to say them out there. People always ask me how I chose who's on the wall. And um, basically, it was uh, I took a long list of like attributes that I think uh, children should, we would like for them, you know, courage, uh, an academic brilliance, um, creativity, uh, this, this, and this, you know. And then I just started thinking about Africans in history and trying to map them back, you know, to those attributes. So that's why you'll see people on you never heard of, but there was something about their experience that I think is important. So I'll just give an example. You got Felix Mumi from Cameroon. It's not a big historical figure, but um, he went to negotiate in Geneva, you know, with the people thinking he's, you know, negotiating with. Europeans of liberal tent and all of that. And they poisoned his drink with thallium. And uh, the way they did it, they put enough in so when he drank it, he was supposed to die two or three weeks later. But instead, but he was suspicious. So he didn't drink this one. So just when it was time to uh, leave, he went to the restroom and he came back. And he's thirsty, you know, because he'd been. And the, and the guy panicked. Once he went in, he took his, um, the thallium he had, and he put some in the other, other uh, glass, mm -hmm. water, whatever it is. Uh, but that wasn't measured. So when the guy came back, he was gonna leave, and I think last minute, he just drank that one. So he died that night. So, of course, this, the, the thick cover was blown, because they wanted him to die two or three weeks later in Africa so they could blame someone else. But dying that night, everybody knows that they, they had their poison man. So it was an international, not a big conspiracy, because like I say, they're judge, jury, and executioner. So, but the point is, it was clear the man was assassinated. So what is the lesson to the children? And you know don't what that is. Don't, hey, don't drink don't, the Kool-Aid. Don't baby. trust your enemies. <laughs> and, and they can smile at all that liberal Geneva, blah, blah, blah. They kill you dead. You know, so. So we have different reasons that we have, you know, people on the wall. Yeah, and um, I think one of the most impressive things that you have is you don't have Nelson, Nelson Mandela on there. After going to South Africa last year, I was burnt out with Nelson Mandela. I didn't want to hear them. But um, 
That's one of the names that's, I noticed that I have on there. And he's probably more famous than everyone else. That's always a question people have. They say, where Mandela? I said, she's right there. Because I got Winnie on there. That's right. And, uh, you got the right Mandela on there. So I tell them sometimes, just because BBC tells you something, you ain't got to believe it. Right. You know what I mean? And not, and not to take anything away. I don't want to, you know, disparage you a little bit. They always ask me, and I said, well, he'll go up there. I mean, who am I? You know, it's, it's my wall, so I guess. I said, when either, when he tells me to put him up there, well, she can do it, you know, I am send it in her kind of message and her kind of message. Or when we get the land back, whichever comes first, you know. But we ain't getting the land back. I mean, I wrote a little thing, uh, in 2008, it was called, this is when Obama was running against uh, Hillary Clinton, and they were still in Super Tuesday time. I wrote a thing called Obama, Black Emotion Clouds Critical Analysis. And in there, I talked about the South African experience. And of course, it was 2008 when I'm writing this, and I'm saying, so now look what has happened. You know, black folks are more desperate than ever, you know. The number of people living on a dollar a day or something, and two dollars is double. I mean, the wealth gap between the, the whites in South Africa and the black natives is all exposed. All of these things have happened, you know, and now he's got the Nobel Prize, you know, and all of this. And so, you know, I mean, it's not to say, you know, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't on Robben Island for 27 years, right? So it's like, who am I to talk? But, you know, we're looking at, we want the land. You know, just here, I mean, not to digress, but just here, we have ShopRite, uh, the game, some kind of chicken place out of South Africa, all of this South African investment that has spread all over Africa since uh, we apartheid so-called ended and we got this multiracial government and all of this stuff. And so it's opened up to South Africa now can do anything they want all around Africa, whereas before we would have said, no, you know, you can't come set this stuff up here. So they won. Well, you know, no battles over, but they won. So the white South Africans, all over Africa, their whole image has been expunged, the record has been expunged, and they're pimping us all over Africa, right? With no bad, you know, karma, nothing. And the people there don't have what they're supposed to have. So we have to, we can't look at just what BBC tells us, we have to look at the legacy. And the legacy right now is not good. Now we may look down the road and see there's some dynamics that are set in place in the long view, we should say, okay, that was part of Mandela's good legacy. Until we get the land back, uh, I'm saving my paint because there's a whole lot of other folk that I really want to get up to. Yes, yeah, so basically, so you said. The truth is not there. I got a lot of people. Amos Wilson not even there yet. You know Amos I mean? Wilson, that's the mastermind so we, we, we right there, man. We have a lot man. of people that aren't even there, so we got to get to them. You have so that's the no, black power psychologist right there, there, man. See, Amos. It's not there yet. Time or because you well, know. just yet. You know, oh, okay. one thing I had to guard against was um, having too many uh, black folks from the U.S. on there. Yes. Too many Americans, quote unquote, too many Ghanaians. You know, because it's a global thing. Because the Ghanaians are always coming up like, you know, my, where, where's my Uncle Kofi? You know, he's the first one that brought coconut to the so and so. He should be there. So, I mean, it'd be all Ghanaians if I let them have. And, of course, in the U.S., we got all of these people that we know. Paul Robeson's not. I mean, it's all kind of people, you know, that I would love to be a, So, we'll be working on it. But, um, yeah, good job, man. I had eight different artists, too, by the way. And so, that's why you see different styles. Yeah, I think all the people that you picked uh, were just, just was, for the most part, true to the game. Well, we tried, you know. As, yeah. Some there's controversy, you know. Some people say, why is Booker T. Washington on there? Or, but we can talk about that. So we ready to go? People still Nobody? debating about Booker T. <laughs> well, you know, there's something to debate about. Booker said, T. why is the boys not there, right? Oh, he, the boys? Well, he'll come. Right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, Obama, Mandela. Well, Those are people like okay. you keep off walls. Including Kofi Annan. Oh, keep him off too. Well, <laughs> when we turn the camera off, we'll talk to him. <laughs> All right, cool. There you go. There you go. All right. Let me stop right here, family, and we're going to cool down and take that walk. Everybody ready? Yes. We 